Here is the dance, the varsity drag. You love to do the varsity drag. Better not be late, just be up to date. You will think it's great, the varsity drag. Now, here is the drag. See how it goes. Down on the heel, up on the toes. That's the way to do the varsity drag. You Louise Brooks is the epitome of the 1920s flapper look with her dark lips and bold eye makeup. The 1920s seems to be an era of bold, dark-hued makeup looks to go with the new bold, adventurous woman of the era. But what did these colors look like in real life? Well, we have the answer. Really? Those are the colors? Yes, I'm afraid so. The actual flapper look was very brightly colored. The dark, sinister vamp look was actually largely the result of the way the photographic film picked up colors. You see, modern film doesn't do this. Old-style orthochromatic film had the problem of darkening reds and browns to the point they appeared almost black. Meanwhile, blues, greens would often appear too light. Freckles especially would show up really heavy if you didn't cover them with a thorough caking of makeup. Thanks to all this, 1920s flapper makeup has a reputation for being much more gothic than it really was. Begin with a perfectly clean face and your cold cream. This is going to become the base of the makeup. This is an actual trick women used in the 20s. You smear cold cream all over your face, making sure to get a thorough coating, and then blot it using a Kleenex. Interestingly, this is the original purpose for which Kleenex was designed. Next, we'll take our face powder. To be historically correct, you should choose a light shade, and we begin to apply it all over the face to get an even, heavy coating. This is what people would have worn on the streets. An actual theater or film actress would have probably worn grease paints to get a heavy enough coating. Almost forgot, make sure it's a matte powder, no sparkles. For the eyes, we're going to need two shades of green. This palette has both, light and dark. And we're going to begin with the dark green on the lower part of the eyelid towards the lash line. Just paint that up from the lash line into the crease. When we're done, we get our lighter shade of green, and we begin painting that up on top of the eye and also underneath the eye. This is going to be achieving a more blended shade. In the 20s, cream eyeshadows were actually more popular, and so if you have a cream eyeshadow, that would be probably more accurate, and you might not need to use two colors because you can just blend it out into your makeup a bit better. But with powders, we're going to have to get two shades to make a match. After your eyeshadow is thoroughly blended, get out a black eye pencil and just make a narrow line on your bottom lid and also on the top lid. Make sure that the outer corners are connected. The formulas for eye pencils actually haven't changed very much since the 20s. Also that which at the time was called mascara could be used as an eyeliner. More on that later. When you're finished, make sure to blend the eye makeup so it doesn't look chunky and also so it blends into the eye color. We then take a little more of our dark green and just put a touch of it underneath the eyes to even out the hues. Then we go back in with the pencil and darken the eyebrows. If you really want, you can go all out and draw in a new shape that is more like Louise Brooks, but I'm just going pretty much with my own natural eye line here. Then we go in with mascara. The kind of mascara they used in the old days was a bit different than the substance we use now. Um, they might use a cake, like a solid 
piece of makeup that they had to wet a brush and rub it into to apply it onto their eyes. They could also do what was called beading, where they would melt hot wax and then paint that onto their eyes. That actually seemed to get a very nice look, although it was probably not very pleasant to actually put on. Here we're just using modern mascara, and we're going to paint our upper and lower eyelashes both very thoroughly. For the lipstick, we want to pick out a nice bright red shade. I'm using a slightly orange-tinged color to match the photograph. And we're just going to use a brush to paint it on here. In the old days, they had a type of lipstick that was half stain and half pigment. Um, because they wanted it actually, despite the loud colors, to look sort of like it was your own lips. And it was a little more tricky to apply than modern lipsticks, but we'll get a fair enough effect using this. Make sure to pay special attention to the cupid's bow. For our final step, we're going to use blush. In the old days, they would have had a circular puff that came in the container. I'm going to try to fake it out with a kabuki brush here to get that circular effect. Just pat it right onto the apples of your cheeks just below the eye. Try to pick a similar shade to whatever lipstick you've used. It used to be considered a beauty essential that you match your blush and your lipstick. Here we're just going to blend it out a bit. This is optional. And with that, we've completed the look. When we run this through a filter that approximates the look of old-fashioned film, we get exactly the kind of effect we want. The fact is, old makeup wasn't ghostly, drama queen, black and burgundy hues, but it was actually a lot of very bright, vibrant colors. Don't know what